Greetings everyone and welcome to Back to Ashes. For those of you who are new or if you've been sitting in the shadows, please consider coming forth and showing that subscribe button some love. Make sure you also turn your notification bells to all. That way you don't miss every video that I upload daily. Also, if you would love to become a member of Back to Ashes or buy me a coffee as a special thank you, all of that information can be found down below. Now, with all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled, True Neighbors from Hell. Right after this intro, an ad will be played. I'll read the first story, an ad will be played. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. For those that listen to the first story and think that that's it, no, it's not. <laughs> right after that ad is played, the rest of the video, I read long form stories. I just read that very short one in the beginning so we can go ahead and get all the ads out of the way. I hope that clears up some confusion. Disclaimer, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes. These neighbors are not from hell, but there wasn't a subreddit for venting about mildly annoying neighbors. Basically, what's the deal with judgmental old ladies who walk by our house and loudly comment on it, and on our yard, to each other without acknowledging that you are right there, visible and within earshot? I'm a first-time homeowner and, while I work a lot and don't have a ton of time at home to keep up my yard the way I would like it to look, I do take pride in my work and my gardening. I do my best, so it irks me when I hear the old neighborhood ladies making snarky comments like, somebody's been doing some pruning after I deadheaded the roses and was sitting clearly visible on my porch. Or, I guess the new homeowner doesn't like flowers. After I remove one garden bed to create an off-street parking spot for my car. Or, I'll hear them standing in the street basically shouting at each other. So loudly that I'm sure the whole block can hear them. And certainly loud enough for me to hear them through my windows. Things like, It is such a small house, I can't believe it's sold. I'm a quiet person, and a tired, overworked person, and I admit, I have not made a great effort to seek out and befriend my new neighbors and whatnot, but I have always been friendly and approachable to the neighbors who have introduced themselves to me, or exchanged passing greetings, so what I don't get is why they think it's okay to stand outside my house and loudly make some rude comments, like, do they lack awareness that they are loud and I can hear them? I don't know, but I feel antagonized and exposed in my own front yard. I know that whatever I do will be critiqued by the old ladies. Okay, after that story, it just makes me think of my own philosophy. If you don't feed, fuck, or finance me, your opinion doesn't count. So I hope this guy ends up getting the luck and the break that he needs. Back to our stories. Hi. This is my first time ever posting this for the world to see. And, well, I think I may be in danger. Okay, so I sent the property management an email about a situation with my neighbor last week. I was thinking about not sending anything after I couldn't reach out to anyone and even drove out to the office. But Friday night, I noticed my apartment neighbor, who lives across from me, was following me, I think. She never parks in the front parking lot, and suddenly, she parked next to my car. There were open spaces, so it seemed weird. This is what happened and I copy and pasted it from the email I sent. Quote, My parents come to visit me on Wednesday, 
May 15th, and they were in my apartment with me for a few hours until we went out to eat. We were headed out the door, and I was the last one as I was turning down the TV and lights. While I'm in the apartment doing that, my door is open as my parents wait for me. I hear my mom say, What pretty white flowers! I was confused as I had never gotten into gardening. I thought maybe the complex grew some flowers. I step out to see the flowers, and I tell her those are not mine, and Patsy comes out. My mom was holding the spot of flowers. Patsy says the flowers were hers and brings them inside her apartment. I guess she thought my mom was trying to take her flowers and didn't give us a chance to explain. The flowers were placed by the handrails in front of the door, so yeah, I get my mom's confusion. Me and my family went out to eat and shop before they went back home. I thought about explaining the situation to Patsy when I saw her, so there would not be any bad blood. The next day, Thursday, May 16th, I came out of my apartment for an errand and see the flowers, and I look at them from the door, because they are absolutely beautiful. But I noticed a sign with strong language towards me. There were some attached pictures. I did not want to get close to the plant because I didn't want to cause any more issues. I have attached photos. I can't make out the whole message, but as you can see, the photo says, Do not touch me, fucking bitch ass. I just don't want the situation to escalate from here, and I do not appreciate the strong language. Also, I was not planning or complaining because I stayed to myself. But Patsy has been leaving cigarette butts in my door. I am not a smoker. She smokes at the complex, and I know the complex is anti-smoking. She has her chair in the middle of the hallway, in everybody's way. I would rather reach out to you all in a way to either mediate the situation or try to have something on record in case the situation escalates. At this point, I would rather be the better person, stay to myself, and just let you know what is going on, end quote. I sent the email on Friday, and just today, Tuesday, I got a call from property management. One of the managers was really helpful, and he told me he is not scared of taking care of the situation. He explained it could go bad and Patsy could escalate things if she was told something. I green-lighted it and told him to give her a warning because I am tired of people treating me any old type of way. Well, about less than an hour later, I hear yelling and slamming and Patsy starts crying and yelling and I, I record it. I can hear, I'm going to beat her ass. I guess she left and came back and I hear her grandson crying. I didn't want to be a tattletale, but I have had emotional trauma from an abusive relationship, and it all escalated because I never said anything. I also experienced a lot of injustice growing up. My parents were wealthy, and we had the best-looking house on the block. Some racist neighbors tried to make our lives miserable, and I'm just tired of being pushed around. If she comes at me, I'm calling the cops. Oh, um, here's a quick addition. I got called out for saying my parents were wealthy. I'm going to put some background info. My parents are immigrants and well went into a mainly non-ethnic neighborhood to escape a violent neighborhood. My dad worked his ass off, and when we moved in, it was what we could afford. Over the years... He managed to make the house look better and gave it more financial value. Well, we had a lot of situations happen in a 13-year span. Racism, had stuff thrown at our home, mail stolen, trash can and recycling bin stolen, random dog shed all over our lawn, a firecracker placed and go off inside our mailbox, graffiti with racial slurs, and a crazy-ass man attacking my pregnant mother. 
and my uncle, who was coming from out of town, was blamed for attacking our next door neighbor. He was hundreds of miles away at the time of the attack. We were told by some neighbors that the neighbors complaining about us said we didn't deserve such a pretty home. A lot of times they called the cops and they couldn't really explain. My dad worked out of town five days a week and didn't come back until the weekend. My mom was left to care for us by herself. The last incident, which was my uncle and my parents, learning English better. There were times they didn't explain the right way and the cops would literally laugh. I've gotten comments on how we weren't taken seriously for being immigrants. Well, I was born in the USA and I know my rights. It took years for my parents to understand their rights too as legal residents. Hello there. English is not my first language, and even if this is a story about a Karen neighbor, I need advice. Please let me know your comments on this. Here's some context. I, 8 female, 35 years old, rent an apartment in a building with two apartments per floor. Each floor shares a small hall with the closed elevator and the closed door to the stairs. Karen who I think is maybe 55, moved six months ago. She owns her apartment. When she moved in, she gave my address instead of hers. So for weeks, an assortment of people kept ringing my bell, bringing fridges or internet connections or whatever. I was confused the first time, but I asked the building manager and he told me that it was probably my new neighbor. So I started to either redirect them to the correct apartment or inform the manager. No big issue. Except she never thanked me or apologized for the mistake. That was weird, number one. I immediately noticed she wouldn't reply to me or my partner's polite good mornings and good afternoons. Which is extremely weird, number two in my culture. Once, my boyfriend and I were taping some draft stoppers to my door. She noticed her door and asked my boyfriend, Where is the girl from? Using kind of a derogative term. For clarification, we are all from the same country, although I am from a different region. I happily answered, thinking this was the start of a least a polite hello, and asked her what state she was from. She closed the door without answering. Whatever. Weird number three. The issue. She smokes like a chimney, and I have extreme migraines, which are affected by most strong smells, but mainly cigarettes. She smokes inside her apartment next to her door, so the smell goes into the hall and into my apartment, where I'm sitting close to the door working from home every day. It's just not possible to relocate this desk. Considering how uninterested she was in talking to me, I asked the manager and the building administration about leaving the door to the stairs open since it was enough to keep the smell away. They agreed and all was good for a while, but I noticed someone was removing the doorstop I used to keep the door open and sometimes it seemed to be done with anger as I found it thrown into the stairs, but she never spoke to me until THE day. THE day I was removing the doorstop because I was leaving the apartment and didn't need the open door, and she opened her door and started screaming at the top of her lungs that she was an owner and she wanted that door closed and it was going to stay closed and that I was a ridiculous person, that she didn't have time to listen to me, that we were in the winter. That wasn't true. That she didn't care about people being polite to me, that she was going to steal my doorstop and throw it to the damn dogs, that she didn't care about my health or anything about myself. Please understand that this was the first time she spoke to me, She's never even said hello before that. 
I am quite a calm person, and I know how to keep calm under stress. I don't ever raise my voice or use bad words. I remain calm trying to explain that it is because of my health and that I'm willing to cooperate with her to establish when to keep it open and when to keep it closed so that it helps us both, but she was having none of it. She screamed at me so long that I was able to record her for over two minutes of non-stop screaming and polite explanations and offers to talk from my side. The video ends with her slamming the door and me saying, I don't know what's happened to you before in your life, but I've never been impolite to you and it's not fair that you take your anger out on me without listening to any valid reasons to keep the door open and my offer to cooperate with you. Since then, I've spoken to lawyers, building administrators, and even a neighbor tried to mediate. She slammed the door in his face while screaming that I was a crazy person and needed to have my sanity checked by a professional. There's not much to be done because that door should be closed for security reasons. And even if it's allowed to be open, it was only allowed to be open for a brief period. No one can do much if she closes it. I can report her for aggression, but she is an owner and I'm not, so I would need to leave the building. She's stolen my doorstop, but I bought some sticks that I can continue using, but the reality is that I'm scared. I'm having nightmares nonstop, and I get anxious every time I hear the elevator because I think it's her outside my door. I could move, but I live in a city overrun by Airbnbs, and I have a cat, so it could take me months to find a place. Trust me, I'm already looking. And I would have to pay a lot to get my current landlady to leave the place early. By the way, my landlady couldn't care less about this problem. One, I've already put draft stoppers surrounding my door. Two, I want to put a camera, but I'm unsure if legally I'm allowed to do so, as it would see into her apartment when she opens the door. Number three, she's not here every day only around one-third of the month. And number four, I can't throw deodorants because most smells give me migraines. Any suggestions? Plants? Activated carbon? Do they work? I thank you in advance. I live in Montana, and a few years ago, I was forced to relocate after my landlord decided to rent to her son. The community I had lived in for 11 and a half years has become incredibly expensive. $787,000 median home price. Unfortunately, I was forced to relocate to another city, and because of the unexpected move and associated costs, I moved in with a roommate. My roommate left to pursue better job prospects about three months after I moved in. Our unit was a triplex, so there were two gentlemen that inhabited the other units. I was never added to the lease, as the property manager required a full deposit, and I was not in a financially healthy spot at the time. I remained in that unit for one and a half years on my own paying the rent and utilities. I became very good friends with the man in the unit closest to mine. We will call the man Devin. Devin was a disabled veteran in recovery. I am also a veteran, so he held a soft spot in my heart. We shared meals, hung out, and discussed all of life's mysteries and would look out for one another. Devin had gone to treatment for six weeks, and I had watched his cat while he was gone. Our friendship developed over the course of that one and a half years. Devin had expressed romantic interests. However, right from the beginning, I clearly informed Devin that I did not share those feelings, and we would never be more than just good friends. 
Devin seemed to be lonely, which made sense. However, I'm a person who requires alone time to recharge my batteries. I set strict boundaries for Devin as he wanted to hang out all the time. I would catch him walking through the front yard multiple times a day to get the mail, which I believed was to see if I was outside so he could stop and chat. When I would leave in the morning to go to work, Devin was always outside to tell me I looked nice and to have a good day. I told him that made me feel very uncomfortable and he should just send a text letting me know if he wanted to hang out and wait for a response. There was a couple of times I yelled at him for overstepping my boundaries. The first, I had just got home and pulled into my garage. I was on a phone call and had stayed in the car. Devin looked through the garage window to see if I was home. I was annoyed but didn't really think much of it. The second, I was getting dressed in my bedroom in the summer, so the window was cracked. I felt... This was safe as the window was not in a place that anyone should be walking by as it was on my patio, out the back of the house. I caught Devin peeking through. I lost it. I let Devin know under no certain terms this behavior was inappropriate and that if he didn't respect my boundaries, we could no longer be friends. Last year, while I was still in the home, I had asked Devin to watch my dog just for a couple of days so I could go to a family event out of state. Devin was happy to help and was very appreciative. Not long after I returned, I started to notice strange things in my home, but I really just thought it was me. For instance, I would be fairly certain... I had locked my door in the morning when I left for work, but when I returned, it would be unlocked. I would be sure I had shut off the lights, but when I got home in the evening, one would be on. I really just thought it was absent-mindedness. Fast forward a couple of months, and my mom became sick with cancer. My sister watched my dog while I went to tend to my mother. My sister reached out to me and asked if anyone else had a key to the apartment. I let her know she had the only spare key, but I asked her why. Similarly, she had experienced the same issues with lights and locks. I had not shared my concerns with my sister prior to her communicating hers with me as I really just doubted my own sanity. While I was out of town, I received a text message from Devin asking if I had a potato he could borrow. I let him know that I was out of state with my mom, who was sick. Devin did not reply, which was out of character. But I had noticed a change in Devin's effect. He was more reserved and less friendly towards me. I thought it probably had to do with my firm adherence to my boundaries, which was okay. He didn't have to like them, he just had to respect them. When I got back home, one night I stayed over at my sister's house after helping her move. As mentioned above, I was struggling financially, so I would carefully budget and plan my weekly meals. The morning before my sister's move, I had placed three pieces of bacon into a Ziploc bag to be used later for a BLT. When I returned the following morning, much to my disbelief, there were only two pieces of bacon. I held the bag in my hands, knowing that there had been three. No longer did I doubt myself. I called my sister and let her know that someone had been getting into my house. I always keep the place locked up. The only logical thing that I could think of that happened is Devin made a copy of my key when he had watched my dog in the fall. My sister reminded me about the potato text. The potato in the counter basket was gone. I had enough information to be certain my neighbor had violated my trust and was not a friend. However, I still wasn't afraid of him. As I mentioned, he is a disabled vet 
and was somewhat feeble and sickly. I was not scared of confrontation. I immediately went to the hardware store and purchased a camera that streams to your phone once the motion detector has been activated. I placed it facing the side door where Devin would enter. It also had two-way audio capability, so my plan was that when Devin decided to enter my home again, I would see it and say over the camera something to the effect of, get the fuck out of my house, put the key you copied on the counter, and never try to speak to me again, or I will contact law enforcement. As I wrote above, I was not on the lease and did not want to be homeless, so I could not turn to the property manager for help, and Devin knew that. In the evenings, I started placing a jug of cat litter and a kitchen chair in front of the door that I knew Devin was accessing the apartment from, but I never expected he would attempt to come in while I was at home, and really, he had only taken a piece of uncooked bacon and a potato. Laying on the couch one night watching TV, I thought that I had heard something sliding on the floor in the laundry room where the door was, but I knew there was no way he could have come in while I was home. My cat was running around playing, so I decided it was probably just her, and I was being paranoid because of all that had happened. The next morning, while changing my laundry, I noticed the litter and the chair had been pushed three to four inches. I checked the sensitivity of the camera and found that I was able to replicate by slowly opening the door. Devin tried to come in while I was home. What in the fuck? That morning, I took bear spray into the shower with me while my knees knocked. I was terrified. I felt vulnerable and violated. Devin knew that I knew now also. He knew that I had placed a barrier in front of the door. After that morning, he was never outside in the morning, nor did he walk through the yard to get his mail. I obtained a firearm for protection and did make a police report. The police officer was annoyed with me as I did not want him to approach Devin, as all Devin would need to do is report me to the property manager and I would be homeless. I am grateful that whatever he was up to was apparently thwarted. The fact that he tried to come in while he knew I was home gives me the heebie-jeebies. I wonder if he went through my underwear, watched me sleep, etc. Since my situation has greatly improved, I ended up moving out shortly after to take care of my mom. I got my own place a few months ago. I will never put my trust in another neighbor for pet or house sitting again. It still blows my mind that I had some douchebag stealing from me and likely stalking me. This story just solidifies one should always trust their gut. There were so many times that a red flag was screaming and I just thought I was being crazy. So, for context, my partner and I got our townhouse halfway through 2022. We bought the house in our hometown, so we just felt like it was meant to be. The first couple months were amazing, and we had so many game nights and had cute little family get-togethers. For it to be a townhouse, it's perfect for our little fur family. At the time, it was a cat and dog. When we moved in, the house next to us, separate from the townhouses, sat empty until 2023, when our new neighbors moved in. We also got a second dog in early 2023. The new neighbors weren't the type to come say hi and have a conversation, and we were okay with that. In May 2023, my partner and I had come home around the same time and we both parked out front on the public street. 
My partner had parked near the edge of the neighbor man's property line, and next thing we knew, my partner was getting called a racist and other profanities that aren't appropriate for this platform because of the consequences that go with it, and told me to move their car. The neighbor man was furious. My partner parked in front of his house on the street because his girlfriend would not be able to back up out of the driveway in the morning. My partner nicely told him we would move and did so while also informing him that it is a public street and are plenty car distances away. Well, the next day came with pre-installed cameras from the previous owner, so we just powered them back on since we felt like we needed to use them now. It was from when I decided to park out back and let my neighbor park out front so it's easier for them to drive. Now, we thought it was all over with the neighbor man because he was quiet all summer and halfway through fall of 2023. November rolled around and my partner was taking the dogs out and the neighbor man was outside as well and decided to say, I'm going to kill those dogs. And my partner responds with, Hey, that's not necessary. And the neighbor man went off on my partner again, spewing harsh slurs and threatening to kill us and the dogs with the guns he has. He could not have a conversation or hold a coherent thought. The last thing we want to do is call the cops. And would much rather him just act normal. Needless to say, the non-emergency cops were called that night, and a report surely was made. We thought the neighbor man had given up, but nope. The next day he showed up with a pit bull. My guess is he borrowed it from a friend to try and intimidate us. I ignored him and took out the dogs as usual, and the neighbor man was out back with the pit bull but I guess he heard me come out the front, so he decided to bring the pit bull out front as well. The pit bull was not on a leash, and his yard was not fenced well. As soon as he heard the front door open, I grabbed my dog and ran inside. I just didn't want to risk my dog or myself getting hurt. That pit bull didn't last long as I heard cries of pain from it all night long, and the dog was gone just as quickly as it had shown up. The winter months were quiet, as I guess it was too cold for the neighbor man to cause any havoc. That was until two days before Valentine's Day. My partner was getting ready for work, and I was just sitting on the couch when I heard a human barking. For context, the neighbors across the alley from us have two large dogs that are outside barking all day. My dogs are quiet. Well, as I heard a human barking, I go to check the cameras and I notice the neighbor man flicking off my cameras and calling us the racists and then goes into the ping stands along the side of his girl's house. He also was throwing trash into our yard over his fence. My partner called the cops once more, and they gave us the same talk as the last time they came. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that the neighbor man yelled at the cop for accidentally parking in his driveway. It wasn't until later, when I was looking back at the camera footage, that I noticed the sound of a can hitting the ground. Luckily, it hadn't rained that night, so I went outside to collect the can, and it was filled with human urine. We followed up with the cop over the phone and asked if there was anything they could do now that it was not just intentional trash tossed over the fence, but pee can and bottle bombs. Nothing really happened, but the trash got picked up at some point by a random man. We thought the neighbor man would have calmed down by now, but things have been getting progressively worse. The neighbor man seems to think that every time the camera goes off, that we are tuning in. The cameras are motion activated, so that means anything moving triggers the cameras. 
the amount of notifications I've gotten from cars driving by by setting the cameras off. These are cameras that came with the house that we only felt the need to charge because of a yelling neighbor man at 4 a.m. and a nailed tire. Like we are not interested in the going ons of this weirdo. Even if the motion light is an issue, we can talk about that too, but all this guy wants to do is act tough and call people racist. We get the sense there are some kind of deals going on, as neighbor man is unemployed, without a license, and regularly has cars parked in front that he leans into for extended periods. Look, not my business. You mind yours, and I mind mine. He does seem very paranoid about it, though. Today, they got some kind of slip from the city posted on their door. We don't know if it's their utilities or some sort of trash find if that random man was with the city. Recently, the neighbor man had been triggering the cameras and saying out loud, You got the right one, or you started it, so I'm gonna fucking finish you. Right in the camera view. At this point, it had been progressively escalating campaign of threats and harassment that we constantly try to not engage with. We don't know what to do anymore. I'm scared to even go outside because I know he's watching me. And on top of that, today I noticed his window open in his bedroom, which has a direct view of our kitchen. I don't even feel comfortable in our own house. I don't want to sell it. I just want the same joy we had the first couple of months before the crazy neighbor man moved in. Any tips, you all? So, we aren't sure what to do. I live with my husband in an apartment on the third floor. We chose the third floor because we didn't want to deal with the footsteps or other noises above us. We just don't want to be bothered. We are not loud. We are in no way disruptive or unruly or do anything that could potentially cause a disturbance of anybody's peace. I cannot stress enough that we don't want to be bothered, so we make it a point not to bother others. Q, the new neighbor. In February, a man, woman, and three kids moved in next to us. It was about a week of them living here that we started to notice they played their music very loud. And not just music, bass. Rattling bass. Shaking our walls bass. Loud ass bass. We give it a few times of it going on for hours before my husband went next door and very politely, truly, introduced himself and welcomed them and kindly asked them to turn their music down. No problem. Until the next day, same thing. Loud bass boosting music for hours. Again, my husband walks over and knocks on the door and politely asks them to turn their music down. They do, for a moment, played this game for about a month before they stopped coming to the door. We contacted the leasing office and they informed us to contact the on-property courtesy officer to file a complaint. My husband called. The officer could not care less and seemed annoyed that he even had to answer the phone. No resolution. Just a waste of time. In our lease, it states a policy about quiet hours and being too loud and disruptive. Not sure why it's in there since it's not enforced, but they're quick to evict people or add a fee for late rent, right? Anyways, the base continues, and then one night, about a month ago, 
We were already in bed, and our doorbell camera is blowing up our phones with notifications. It was about 8.30 p.m., so I started to go through the footage, and I see and hear the man and woman from next door having an argument, and she claims he hit her. He did not deny it. He simply says, you're in my house. And then there's more yelling, followed by her on the phone with police and her kids packing up and moving out their things. On a school night, it was now 9.30 p.m., and we hear more yelling, so my husband goes to make sure the woman and her kids are okay. Quick note, we didn't call 911 because we could hear the woman already on the phone, and we didn't see anything, just heard. No violence was recorded on our camera. Included this because my husband initially thought the kids were playing music when the adults left, but once the kids were gone, the music continued. So here we are, months later, constantly having to listen to his overwhelming loud bass through our walls. I've been home on my off days, and it will start at 11 a.m. and go until 9 p.m. or later. I can hear over the TV, washer and dryer both going, and the dishwasher. Just unnecessary. I am all for listening to music, but come on, man. If you want to blast it, then don't live somewhere you share walls with people. To that point, yes, we are planning to leave when our lease ends in November. Unless my husband decides to pay to break it before then. Lastly, in case I don't mention it, we have called the non-emergency line in our area three different times now, and an officer has come out. Here's the thing. Buddy will not answer the door. He will simply ignore it and send his current girlfriend to talk to them, who is not on the lease, mind you. The officer at our complex told us to call the local PD, the non-emergency always. So we did. The first officer that came out told us to keep calling if this issue persists. The officer who came literally today was a sergeant and spoke again to the female at the door. We are starting to think, based on his own actions, he has some type of run-ins with the law he's trying to avoid. So, all that to say, what the hell do we do now? It's miserable, and honestly, just annoying at this point, and we feel like we can't even relax in our own home. We feel like nobody wants to take accountability and do their damn jobs in regards to our complex, and they basically said it wasn't within quiet hours, which is 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. They can play their music as loud as they want. Okay, so fuck everybody else, huh? We have considered doing the same since they told us that, but I told my husband it will not solve any problems and only create more, not to mention it's inconsiderate to our other neighbors. A quick recap, if you made it this far. Loud music, no help from the complex. Police can only tell him to turn it down as far as I know, unless they issue a citation and warning, but the music is always off by the time they arrive, of course. Are you just expected to shut up and deal with it for the next six months? Before you want to label us as Karens, just put yourself in our shoes. All you want after a long day is to sit on your couch and relax with your spouse. But your couch is vibrating and your walls are shaking. Are there any LEOs or maybe apartment managers reading this that can offer any advice? We just want to coexist happily within the community and fly under the radar. Seems like we're achieving the opposite.
So, my parents have a conflict with their neighbor, and I'm looking for legal ways to annoy them back. Background. My dad is a landscape architect and takes great pride in his yard and knowledge of plants. He is very generous as well and will offer free consultation and plans to everyone. He had a large crop of bamboo in his yard when we moved in that he has since removed. Bamboo is a very hard to remove grass that he rented a back hoe to use for the removal. He has since landscaped the area with evergreens and other trees and shrubs. The bamboo is still on the other side of his fence in the neighbor's yard. Given his generous nature, when the neighbors moved in, me and my dad offered to help the neighbor remove the bamboo and said he would draw him up a design plan for his backyard and help him execute it free of charge. This was due to my dad being generous as well as hating bamboo and wanting to stop it from continuing to creep into his yard. Fast forward four years. On the property line between my dad and the neighbor, there was a very large tree that was dying. A limb fell into the neighbor's yard, and they called my dad and made him come over and cut it up and deal with it. This was a large limb and took my dad a full Saturday to do it. He was not legally obligated to remove the tree since the limb was over their property line and it was an act of God that caused it to fall. Due to safety issues, my dad decided to have the tree cut down. The process of cutting down the tree was a lot. The company had to bring in lots of large equipment. Also, the tree's services was the only one who offered to cut down the tree without the use of a crane. All other bids required a crane and were about thirty to forty thousand dollars. They did use a cherry picker machine. Since my dad had lots of rocks and trees planted around the tree being removed for access reasons, my dad, the tree removal company, asked the neighbor if they could cross the property line and do some work from their yard, which they agreed to do. When cutting into the tree and gaining access to the location, the tree removal company cut down some of the neighbor's bamboo. The neighbor came out cussing up a storm at my dad over a distraction of his trees. Bamboo is a grass, not a tree, and any destruction, it will regrow the same season. My dad was very apologetic and offered to help the guy either take it all out and landscape the yard or buy him new bunches of bamboo and plant them. Fast forward one month, the neighbor hits my dad with a lawsuit for $15,000. The neighbor is an attorney and has attorney friends. Before filing the suit, the neighbor removed all of the bamboo and planted 16 evergreen trees along the fence instead. He is making my dad pay for all of the work he had done, the plants as well as emotional damages. My dad turned it into the homeowner's insurance with documents of bamboo cost, growth, patterns, etc., and told them not to pay the guy. After they reviewed, they said no and passed the blame to the tree service insurance. They offered the neighbor $500 only. The neighbor now served my dad with another lawsuit for $55,000 and legal fees, and he has to appear in court, get an attorney, etc. He is claiming it was a premeditated trespassing and destruction of property since my dad told him he hates bamboo and that he instructed the tree guys to ruin his bamboo. This man has lied on numerous documents he filed for the case and is essentially extorting my dad. What can I do to make this man's life awful that won't get me sued? The guy is clearly a dick and is willing to abuse and extort the law. 
Should I look into turning him into the bar to have his license revoked? The back of their yards touch. My dad had a lot of grandchildren that loved that yard and some dogs as well. So I don't want to put anything on the property line in the effect of smelling. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true Neighbors from Hell stories. Before I go on, I would like to give a very special shout-out to the reform members of Back to Ashes. Samantha Place, Colt Stonewolf, Nat Davies, Stephanie McLaren, Tammy Slayton, Chrissy Elias, Sugar Spite, Tina Mead, Cindy, Amy Klimko, Anita V, Doba Khaleesi, Edith Smith, Les Crispin, Patty's niece, Denise S., Kwame Carter, Corpse Lover, and Cindy Cleveland. Thank you all so much for your support. For without you, there would not be a me, and there would not be this channel. Thank you. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you are awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, stay safe out there, and take care of yourselves. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.